One of the most important things when simulating a system, a discrete event system, is to focus on the state space. And this is the set of variables that describe the dynamic behavior of the system. Let's start with a simple example, uh, with the rabbits and foxes that we talked about earlier. And so we have a certain set of rabbits and we have a certain set of foxes. And these are both dynamic variables of time. So we call it, you can call it rabbits of t and foxes of t. And the rabbits of t will depend on the previous value of the rabbits and time in time t minus 1. So rabbits t minus 1 and the number of foxes at the time t minus 1. And this is some function of this. Let's just call this f. And similarly, foxes is some function of g of these same values over here. So uh, what I want to focus on is not the uh, f and g and so on, but the fact that the state of the system is really these two values the number of rabbits and the number of foxes, and this is the state space. It just has two variables in it, a number of foxes, number of rabbits, and because once we know these two values, then we know exactly how the simulation proceeds. Moreover, if we want to know the average number of rabbits over time, that would be a statistic computed on rabbits t, on the array of this uh, rabbit values, and similarly for foxes, and we wanted to plot the dynamic evolution of rabbits over time, then what we would do would be over here, which would be the population size, population size. And this is going to be a discrete uh, system, of course, so we have some kind of increment and there are too many rabbits, so they're going to be the foxes come in and then it, and it sort of goes down and then it goes up again, etc. So we expect some kind of cyclic behavior and this is the dynamic evolution of the state variable rabbits t over time, and uh, and this is the state space. Now, uh, the important thing to notice is that uh, each uh, simulation run, or each time you run the simulation, the actual value of the population or actual value of the state space is going to change. So if you were to run the same exact simulation all over again, because of some randomized uh, uh, randomized events, we might see something slightly different. It may not go exactly like this. It may go like this instead. And so we recognize this as being the fact that the population size is actually a random variable. And in fact, it's not just a random variable. It's a, a, it's a stochastic or random process. And so what we're seeing over here is essentially two trajectories of the random process. And in our discussion of stochastic processes, we can make this very clear. Essentially what we're saying is that at each point in time, the random variable at this point in time takes on a value from a distribution. And that is why the two different values of the simulations are going to give us two different values for the same random variable because these happen to be drawn from the same distribution but are two different values drawn from the same distribution. So in some sense what we have over here are two trajectories of the same uh, stochastic process. Um, and uh, so in a course of simulation what we're trying to do is to create a set of trajectories such that any kind of statistic we compute on these trajectories are going to be giving us some information about the underlying stochastic process. And to do this, we need to be fairly sure that this is an ergodic stochastic process. In other words, the underlying Markov chain or underlying stochastic process has all the properties that we require from an ergod for ergodicity uh, that we discussed in stochastic processes. Because these are stochastic processes, it's quite clear that uh, we can have essentially four kinds of simulations, which are going to be continuous space or discrete space, and then multi and the cross product with continuous time and discrete time. For our purposes, we'll be focusing mostly on discrete space and discrete time because that is what characterizes uh, essentially all computer systems.